good morning. Good morning to the Augusta Community Church people, to the Dearborn Church people, and to all of you who are maybe listening in online somewhere. It's good to be with you again for our um, second online sermon here in Augusta, Montana. Uh, have you ever seen uh, large flocks of birds? I mean large, tens of thousands. This last week, Terry and I had the privilege of going to a lake near here and seeing tens of thousands of snow geese. Amazing birds. They, they uh, winter down in the marshes and wetlands of Texas and Mexico. And in the early spring this time of year, they start moving northward where they go eventually to up near the Arctic Ocean where they build their nests and have their young. Uh, but they lay over just not too far from here, a large flock of them, upwards of two to 300,000 of them. And we were watching tens of thousands of them the other day as they would uh, get up and in mass and fly and then come circle back down again. Uh, it's amazing what these birds do is they... They know the seasons, they know when to go south, they know when to come north, they come together. They Even when they nest, they, uh, the, the, they, they nest in pairs, a, a male and female, they, they raise their young together. The young stay with them for up to two years, uh, which is amazing to me because they all look the same. How do they tell? But they can do that. Uh, it just shows me uh, God's amazing design and creativity that he has in, in our world that we live in. Today is Sunday morning, obviously, and if you are listening to this, then you are probably like us and not able to attend church because of the current attempts to eliminate this virus that is affecting not only the world, but our nation. Our governor here in Montana called for a shelter in place as of Friday night, but we still can look at the bright side and see this Sunday as providing a great time of quieting our spirits after a hectic and worrisome week by meditating on some thoughts from God's Word, the Bible, which serves to show His creativity, His love for His creation, His specific love for the people, uh, you and me, that He made in His image. If you have a Bible this morning close at hand, and I hope that you do, uh, turn to the first page, which is Genesis chapter 1. I would like to read the whole chapter to you, but really only take, I'm only going to read to you certain passages, and, and in those passages I think you're going to pick up very quickly a, a common thread, a, a, a common little phrase that, that stands out in each of these passages. So if you have your Bible, and I'm reading out of the New American Standard Version, maybe, maybe if you have that it may be easier to follow along. Uh, I want to start in Genesis chapter 1, and I want to read to you, first of all, uh, verses 1 through 4, which say this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Now let's jump ahead to verses 9, 9 and 10. Then God said, Let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Now down to verse 12. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind, and God saw that it was good. Verses 16 through 18. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Verses 24 through 25. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after their kind, and it was so. God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind, and God saw that it was good. Skip down to verses 26 and to the end of the chapter. Then God said, <clears throat> Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be food for you and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that moves on the earth which has, which has life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and behold, it was very good. Father, thank you this morning for your word and that we can read it and know that it's truth, that it is uh, words that you have preserved for us to have, to rely on and to look to for guidance in our lives. And even in these short passages, Lord, there's things for us to learn and to gain uh, encouragement from on this very day. I pray that you would be with the rest of this time as we're together. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. After his labor of designing, creating, and giving life to his creation, God rested and enjoyed what he had made. Throughout his creating, it was good. You probably picked up on that, didn't you? And at creation's completion, it was very good. God enjoyed the fruit of his labors. And he looked at that and said, this is not just good, it's very good. A question I have for you to think about is, what labor did you accomplish this past week? Was it the job that you go to, that, uh, that you've been at for years perhaps, or a short time? Uh, was it online classroom work? Or perhaps it has been the work of just staying at home in a quarantine situation? Was the fruit of your labors good? Could it have been very good? I, I want to propose this morning that no matter the circumstances we are involved in, as those who have been created in the image of God, it is possible to have a peace that guards our minds, guards our emotions, and lets us regard the life we live in Christ as valuable and filled with hope that life is very good. Maybe some might think I'm being too idealistic or perhaps maybe too simplistic to think there can be peace in our hearts when we live in a time where a virus is spreading across the world, where many jobs are suspended, businesses are closed down, the stock market is depleting the retirement funds of many people, other people are isolated in their homes and politicians are arguing and the media and various celebrities seem determined to project fear into your life and others. You know, there are some advantages to living in a rural community like Augusta and like many other similar com communities across our great country. Here in our town, we live a ways off the beaten path, which contributes greatly to why we have not had the virus as of yet. And because of that, for the most part, we continue to live our lives as best we can, taking the precautions prescribed by the experts, knowing full well that it may work its way across the prairies or over the mountains. But maybe for us and others who live in rural areas, it may seem to be easier to go through this time as each day we see things like the snow shining on mountains in the morning sunlight, knowing that this spring that snow will melt into water that will come down and feed the land and supply our needs. We notice the changes in weather as spring approaches. We get to witness these great flocks of snow geese on their way back north, and we start hearing that the bears are coming out of their dens, and the eagles and hawks are sitting on their nests. We get to see the fabulous array of stars in the clear night sky, uninterrupted by man-made lights. All of these riches can bring, can bring peace and comfort to our hearts when we refresh ourselves in them. But for those of us who can believe in those words of Genesis 1, there is a faith in God that supersedes even the peace that mountains, sky, and animals bring to us. In the beginning, God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. So God created human beings in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This image of God that you and I were created to portray presupposed that we would have relationship with our Creator, a relationship free from fear, living in free and joyful fellowship with Him. And if you continue reading from where I left off this morning, you will find that right after this perfect creation was formed, a type of virus infected the land, the seas, the animals, and the plants, and specifically and especially the humans. This particular virus the Bible calls sin. This sin came through the disobedience of the humans as they thought they could be God. This sin broke off that relationship, that fellowship, that enjoyment of being with the Creator. Sin. Sin which takes the forms of pride and rebellion, immorality, uh, thinking that we are gods, uh, worshiping the creation instead of the creator. Uh, this sin is undisputed as the evidence of it is seen throughout history and throughout our world even now. This sin that isolated us from where we were created to be. But you know, none of this took God by surprise. In his design of the world, he saw that human beings would succumb to sin through the deception of Satan and the pride of man. That this sin would break apart that initial created order of relationship. And yet he, God, had already made the way for that fellowship to be restored. God himself, in the person of Jesus Christ, entered our world and lived among us, setting aside his divine privileges. He emptied himself. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He did this for a time so that he would become the one who paid for our sins and brought us back into that fellowship, brought us back from isolation to join into relation with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. So even today in our imposed isolation, we can praise God. We can give Jesus honor as our Savior who has restored our relationship with him now and will someday come back and along with us set up his kingdom. In the meantime, we live in a world where many thousands Many millions of people cannot, because of ignorance or will not, because of choice, look to God as the creator behind the world. They are isolated because of sin from him, their creator. And now on this Sunday morning, March 29th, isolation is compounded because of this other virus, COVID-19. Many thousands, many millions are isolated from one another. Peace is replaced by unrest, anxiety, fear, a loss of hope. These feelings were clearly seen here in our town of Augusta when just last week a young man in our community despaired and for various reasons took his own life. Of course, this isolation that has been imposed upon us to curb the spread of the virus has good intentions and we pray that it is helping. But at the same time, it should cause us to remember or, and, to, and to realize we are created to be in community. We are created to be in relation with one another, to love one another and to know that we are loved by others, to know that we have value, worth, and that there is always hope in this life that we live. Yet what even magnifies our value, our worth, our hope, and our being loved, and what makes it flourish more is to revel in the fact that the God of creation, the designer of us human beings, created us to be in community not only with one another, but also with him. He desires this community with us so much that he demonstrated his love toward us in that he came and made a way of rescue from sin's grip and bring us back, even now, into fellowship and community with himself. God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
has always enjoyed fellowship and community within himself as a triune God. He has never been lonely, never been isolated, except for a short time when Jesus bore our sins upon himself. We'll talk more about that during Easter season. And through Jesus' resurrection and conquering of sin, we are invited into that divine relationship that stops the unrest, the anxiety, the fears, the hopelessness. Within Jesus' community lives the confidence of forgiveness, not judgment, no condemnation. In fact, we live in freedom in the knowledge of eternal life. When we come to see the designed world in which we live, its beauty and its ongoing cycles and seasons, and then we compare that with man's inhumanity with one another, with the wars, the violence, the dictators, the enslavement, the poverty, the diseases, the addictions, and viruses. We know in our hearts that there should be a better world for all. Isn't there someone who can step in and set things right as they were in Genesis chapter 1? A long time ago, the Greeks, through their art, their statues, their Olympic games, their very lifestyles, sought after the perfect man. They idealized him in such figures as Zeus and Apollos and Hercules and others. But the Apostle Paul came to them and said, The perfect man has literally arrived, and his name is Jesus Christ. Even today, mankind is looking for the one who can set things right, who can bring order, justice, prosperity, physical, mental, and emotional healing to all. Someone who, in even, who, who and even in the midst of a worldwide epidemic, can bring peace to minds and hearts. 2,000 years ago, he arrived on planet Earth. Jesus lived his life with no sin. And where the first Adam in Genesis 1 failed, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, prevailed and became worthy to sacrifice his life, taking our sins to the cross, dying with them and rising from the dead, living now, inviting us to know him and to have him save us from sin's curse, inviting us to come back into the community for which we were created, to come out of isolation and into his presence, to come to a relationship that exudes love and value and hope, that all of which extends beyond this present world and all of its circumstances. This Sunday, I would encourage you, along with myself, to take time to sit before the Lord of heaven and earth and quiet your heart as you read the first two chapters of Genesis. And then perhaps turn to one of the books in the Bible that tells the story of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and revel in the truth as you read that God has come down to you. And then let's pray for an end to isolation and a time of being with others and sharing with others the good news. In his book, The Handwriting on the Wall, Dr. David, Dr. David Jeremiah tells a story about John Chrysostom. He was a leader in the early church. He was born in 347 A.D., and he lived until 407. But while still a young Christian, he was brought before the emperor, who said to him that if he would not give up Christ, he would be banished from the country. John replied, You cannot, for the whole world is my father's land. You can't banish me. The emperor then said, Well, then I will take away your property. John said, You cannot. My treasures are in heaven. The emperor said, Then I'll take you to a place where there, is, where there is not a friend to speak to. I will put you in isolation. John said, You cannot. I have a friend who is closer than a brother. I shall have Jesus Christ forever. The emperor said, Then I'll take away your life. John countered and said, You cannot. My life is hid with God in Christ. And the emperor finally said, What do you do with a man like that? Can we be like John Chrysostom, a person who has such rich and vibrant relationship with our Creator 
that our relationships with those around us flourish in nurturing and encouragement and value and love, even in times of COVID-19 isolation. Would you bow and pray with me? Father God in heaven above, we come before you this morning praising you as, as our creator. And in the middle of this virus affecting all of us, may you show us any sin in our lives. And may we take responsibility and confess them to you. And in our confession, O oh Lord, will you hear and will you forgive and will you cleanse us and make us clean so that we can truly rejoice in your gift of salvation that includes relationship with you as we follow you. We proclaim you this morning as creator and as our Savior who restores us to himself. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening in this morning, and may you be blessed throughout this day as you think of God's grace and mercy given towards you through his Son, Jesus Christ. Have a great day.